I remember the plate number of the white van. And I also remember their faces. Without a doubt, this was one of the vans that have been following me. So far, I've confirmed that three or four cars have been following me. I can especially recall this white van, because it followed me around the longest of all. The people who are in the other cars must be the lookouts, and the ones in this van must be tasked with direct contact, like kidnapping or assassination. The lookout secured the surroundings, and the one in this van attacked the target. That's a common maneuver involved in both kidnapping and assassination. The scrapbook said that, too. If so, I'd better watch out, because it was them, not the lookouts, who came to the school premises. I don't think they'll attack me while I'm in school. They're in the early stages of their covert operation now, hiding their fangs and claws until the last stage of their horrifying scheme. That's why they won't take action in the school, where people are watching. But it looked like they were talking with Chi-sensei in a very friendly way. I could only hear bits and pieces of their conversation, but it sounded very suspicious. I tried to remember the chatter and the movements of their mouths, and I played my memory of it like a videotape in my mind. Maido! どうもご苦労様です。今日も暑いですね。いいえ、いいえ。まあ今日。では、すみません。今日もよろしくお願いいたします。はい。よろしくお願いします。これ、うちの事務屋から渡すように言われましたんで。どうですね。ありがとうござい
Chi Sensei confirmed that I came to school today, made a phone call, and called them here? I don't want to know why she called them here. If she called them just to monitor me, they'd wait near the gate until class was over. But they came into the school premises. Why? Stop pretending to be a fool, Renoryugu. Do you think nothing will happen if you pretend not to notice it? Think, think hard, and calm down, Renoryugu. What will they try to do to me in school today? In school? How are they going to do anything with my classmates and friends around me? It's easy. Chi Sensei will tell me to come to the teacher's office during the last class of the day. What about my clubmates? That's easy too. Chi Sensei can make them go home early using her authority as a teacher. She can make up any reason she wants. Maybe the classroom is going to have carpentry work done today, so they can't stay in school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See? There's no doubt. They clearly said they're ready to do it today. And what else? I see. They gave Chi Sensei an envelope with some documents in it. That blank is an eerie phrase. Was my name supposed to be in the blank? Why is it left blank? What does that mean? I told you, Renoryugu. Do you still think that nothing will happen if you pretend not to notice it? Stop that. So, what it must mean is that it's an order from a higher up. It says to make Rina Ryugu become blank. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, at this point, I'm starting to feel like Rina might be, you know, an unreliable narrator. Potentially. I mean, it could be the case that, of course, she's completely right. And that it's all just, you know, pulling wool over everyone's eyes kind of thing. And that they're all in on it. But that has a lot of moving parts to it. And it seems more likely that Rinna may just be an unreliable narrator. Perhaps deluded about, you know, something. A lot of things, probably. And that everyone else is normal. And that the gardeners are just, you know, mowing the yard and not mowing her life. Or something. <laughs> and <laughs> so, this phrase to make Rina Ryugu become blank is kind of humorous. In that, up until this point, it is... If, if Rin is deluded, it's somewhat realistic to think that she could be, del that she could be confused this far, but... <laughs> leaving the page blank, meaning to make Rina Ryugu become blank, is, is humorous. To say the least. I took a peek from the shadows and saw the principal taking documents out from the envelope. He started reading them. He looked stern. He looked very serious. I wished I could take a peek at the documents, but I was too far away. I kept looking at him just to see if he'd react at all. And then the envelope caught my eye. The envelope said, Okonagi Gardeners, and it had some numbers that looked like a phone number. Fortunately, I have good eyesight. I memorized the number. If they're a death squad, the gardening company must be a camouflage occupation. It probably doesn't even exist. I wanted to find out. I looked for a phone. There's only one phone and it's in the teacher's office. Fortunately, the teachers were chatting in the hallway, looking at the gardeners. It was now or never. I made sure nobody was watching me go into the teacher's office. I rushed in and grabbed the phone on the principal's desk. I went over the phone number in my head and dialed it up. I'm glad they have a touch-tone phone. It would have been difficult if it was a rotary dial. 
If somebody answered, I'd only have to ask, Is this the Okonagi Gardeners? I'd wait for the answer before hanging up. That sounds spooky. It should be easy. It connected. Marsh, marsh. Oh, oh, oh. And it's definitely not that you accidentally mismemorized the number. You know, it was so far away that you couldn't quite tell that the, uh, you know, one of the numbers was a five instead of a six. I felt a cold chill run through my body from the bottom of my feet. Wait, don't make a quick judgment. I might have remembered the number wrong. No, I know I remembered it right. It was an easy number to remember. It's impossible to remember it wrong. After all, it was two. <laughs> then, did I dial it? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I make myself laugh at my own stupid joke. Then, did I dial it wrong? I put the phone down and started over. This time, I dialed the number more slowly. The teachers might be coming back at any time. In that situation, it was risky to do anything slowly. But I needed to make absolutely sure. The number you've dialed is the Okonagi Gardeners. It's the same. There's no doubt. The company Okonagi Gardeners doesn't exist. It's just a camouflage occupation for the Sonazaki family's death squad. Oh, I know the number is correct, telephone lady. I was too stunned to put down the receiver. The announcement kept running over and over again. The voice was cold and creepy. I hung up the phone and rushed out of the teacher's office. I ran to the bathroom and held my head in an attempt to cool down. Calm down, Rena. Calm down, Rena Ryugu. Stay cool. Rena Ryugu! I wasn't safe here anymore. If I stayed here, I might be erased, even in the open. They'd erase me? Why? They aren't certain that I have the scrapbooks. I told Keichi-kun where I hid the scrapbooks. Yesterday, I told him I hid them in my hideout, in the garbage dump. Is Keichi-kun in cahoots with the Sonozaki family? I felt as if my head was a pot that was cooking some dubious stew. There was only soup in my brain. I cut up clues, information, and facts just like I'd cut vegetables and threw them into the pot. Some of them were floating on the surface and others were on the bottom of the pot. They were being cooked in a boiling soup. No. It can't be. Keichi Kun is on my side. He's the only one who's on my side. He held out his hand to me at the trash piles. There was no lie in that hand. When he grabbed my wrist, I felt nothing but a strong and pure heart. He promised me he'd be on my side. I shouldn't doubt Keichi Kun. He's the only one I should trust. He's the only one who's on my side right now. Sorry, sorry, Keichi Kun. I said it out loud on purpose, full of regret that I doubted Keiichi Kun, the only one who's on my side. And now that I think about it, whether I have the scrapbooks or not might not matter to them. Erase anyone who's suspicious. That's the safest way. Does it mean that they're in a hurry? The day of Oyashirasama's revival might be just around the corner. And that's why they're trying to get rid of any small fish bones that are stuck in the throat, by any means, before it's too late. We don't need her anymore. Just erase her if you're worried so much. I could easily picture Oyu Sonazaki saying that. Picture? No, she did say that. That's why they're here today. What should I do? What should I do? Should I wait until school is over? I was like a fish in a pond. No matter how many times I escaped from the net, I was in the pond and they owned the pond. I didn't stand a chance. Then what should I do now? 
I couldn't keep escaping from the net. I should get out of the pond. I didn't know how to fight them. I didn't know who's on my side. I was about to give in to despair. For now, I'd have to think about how to survive this. So I'd at least have time to think about how to fight against them. I have to get out of this pond. When I was about to leave the bathroom, one of my classmates came in. I pretended to be sick and talked to the girl while leaning on the wall. I shouldn't let Chi Sensei know that I'm leaving school early if I'm trying to run away from them. But if I didn't, they might think I ran away without cause. That might lead them to chase after me without mercy. If that happens, I don't stand a chance. They were planning to capture me after school is over, but I happened to feel sick and left school early. If they took it that way, they wouldn't think that I noticed the noose tightening around me. I was about to go back to the classroom to get my bag, but I changed my mind and turned around. I didn't need my bag anymore. I realized nobody was watching me, so I stopped pretending to be sick and started running. Good plan, Rena. I mean, it kind of seemed like she's just extremely deluded. But, you know, maybe it doesn't matter. From the uh, narrator's perspective here, it's the truth and I guess uh, we may not find the, the true answer to that after all. Unless we see it, you know, more from Keiichi's side again, perhaps. Oh, under the paper for the gardeners, it's, uh, here's the, here's the hit list. And it looks like she's on the top. Hmm. General Affairs? That sounds like a good hit. Uh, it sounds like a good, like, hitman kind of place. Hmm. Hitman come out of General Affairs, quote. Hmm. Suspicious. Sounds like something a bunch of gardener slash murderers would do. あら、やだ。本当ですね。社長さん。請求書に書いてある電話番号と封筒の電話番号が違ってますけど、どちらが正しいのですか? あ。請求書の方の電話番号が正しいんで、大丈夫。仙台の事務所の時の封筒がまだだいぶ余ってたもんなんで、それに入れてきてまったんですわ。Sounds likely Mr. Gardner son. バイトの子に全部新しい番号の判子を押しとくように言ったんだけどな。すんまへんすんまへん。消しておいてもらえますかね。いや。Yeah. <laughs> it definitely seems like Rena is highly delusional. And an extremely unreliable narrator. Not that that's a bad thing. It's very interesting. It's just... From this point on, I wouldn't really trust anything Rina says. Keiichi's probably the, the only real point of truth we can trust anything that Keiichi sees. You know, assuming that we get more uh, Keiichi time. She still trusts Keiichi at this point. Even though she, you know, doubted him for a bit. She still seems to have a, a general level of trust for him. So I imagine at some point he's going to break that trust by being like, Are you sure, Rena? Because I talked with some people, it doesn't seem right. And it's like, you told them? And then she's not going to trust him anymore. And then we're probably going to lose Keiichi time after that. But we'll probably still get a little bit more of them. 
The danger of a culture-bound syndrome lies in the fact that it can easily trigger delusional misidentification syndrome. That is to say, in the current case, every time the patient sees something trivial, she tries to interpret it as a curse. And it's believed that as a result of the accumulation of these events in an understandable form, a delusional system is created, ultimately leading to paranoia. Furthermore, the patient is also exhibiting slight signs of a personality disorder. Of course, it's at a very mild level, and it's not causing any hindrance whatsoever to the patient's daily life. It's common for even healthy individuals to have primary delusions in their daily lives. But they usually ignore it automatically without recognition, since those delusions are nonsensical. However, there are cases where these delusions accumulate, despite being incomprehensible. It largely depends on the particular characteristics of the individual, and it's believed that the patient shows relatively strong characteristics in this area. I believe you're very much aware that primary delusions are categorized into three different kinds. Delusional mood is the feeling of impending crisis without basis. Delusional institution is a feeling of a sense of duty or goal without basis. Delusional perception is the feeling of a baseless cause against a baseless target. In the patient's case, it's believed that these incomprehensible delusions accumulated, acted out simultaneously with a culture-bound syndrome, which triggered a, a delusional misidentification syndrome. And it ultimately caused the incomprehensible delusions to become understandable by interpreting them as a curse. The comprehensible delusional system induces understandable secondary delusions, further strengthening the patient's delusional system with the passage of time. The delusional parasi par parasitosis mentioned earlier can be considered a secondary delusion. A common factor of all cases of paranoia is that even after an outbreak, they still appear perfectly normal with no change in their personalities. The patients are unaware of their own ailments, and due to their personal interpretations of the delusional system, there are many cases where the patients arm themselves logically, making it extremely difficult for a third party to point out they're having a delusion. I think that's going to be important, is the fact that Rinna is probably unable to see that she's delusional. And Keiichi is probably going to attempt to convince her that she is delusional. And she's not going to believe him, and she's going to take that as a sign of him being in cahoots, or him being a part of it, or something like that. Furthermore, although it may depend on the tendencies of the delusions, there are also cases where a persecure, per, uh, persecutory delusion turns into a pursuit delusion, or conspiracy delusion, resulting in the patient creating an imaginary enemy and taking up antisocial behavior like running away from school. For example, there are cases where believers of a religious cult were deeply influenced by the cult's founder's parano paranoid visions, which shifted the group into a conspiracy delusion, and that made them conduct antisocial behavior in the name of self-defense. Although no such cases have been reported in Japan yet, it could very well happen in the near future. Fortunately, the patient hasn't reached that serious condition as of now. With proper treatment, she should be able to make a full recovery. Please make sure that her father also understands that this is not an unusual case, but something caused by the accumulation of a number of innocent factors that anyone could have. The patient can be treated only by deepening her bond with her father. As long as she has that bond, she can certainly be treated. For the reasons above, if the patient is to return to her home village, I strongly recommend that the patient continue to receive guidance from specialized medical institutions. Please excuse me for writing such a long letter. Thank you for reading this until the very end. They keep going back to the fact that she needs to be with her father in order to, you know, treat herself, to get out of this delusion, to get out of this whole thing she's got going on with her. I wonder why. I know it has something to do with the fact that, her, you know, it's her family, so that it would make sense that being with her father, with her family, would potentially 
help her realize what's going on because she'd trust her family. However, I'm not entirely sure that she'll do that. She seems to think her father's a little bit weak, which I somewhat agree with. And so she probably might not be able to trust him. And, you know, she feels like Keiichi is, you know, sort of family as well. Like a family of friends, as they mentioned. But I have a feeling that Keiichi is going to do something pretty soon. And it's going to break her trust with him. And she's going to be seriously deluded to the point that she can't get fixed. That's what it looks like to me. Anyway. I think that's it for now. But uh, next time we come back, it's, it's clear that she's heavily deluded and that we can't really trust her. An unreliable narrator. And basically the only thing I'll be able to really trust for sure is anything that we kind of see from KHC, I believe. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time for some more Higurashi. Bye.